Battle of Plastic Young People's Project from Arcea, actually, who was one of the other researchers. Um, we used to attend a critical reading group where we'd go and discuss various different topics um, uh, in research. And uh, she was the one who let me know about this group taking place at uh, Brick Lane Circles in London, uh, where a group of Bangladeshis and other people would come together and talk about uh, some of the issues uh, concerning Bangladesh and the Bengali community in East London and I was really fascinated because I haven't uh, grown up around Bangladeshi people or had much interaction uh, with uh, that culture apart from studying uh, in uh, SOAS. I did a, a course in modern Bengal, the evolution of Bengali culture and society from 1690 to the present as a way to really engage with my roots. Um, and so this was really exciting. It was a project where, you know, I, I like writing and I enjoy reading. Um, we could find out something that we wanted to always know about, our own culture and our own identity, but also use that information to be of benefit to others in the form of a book um, and other resource materials. And I thought that was fantastic and something really exciting uh, to do as an exploratory study. It was quite an interesting uh, process because you actually left, you're out in the open thinking, OK, I could research anything I want to, uh, where do I start? Um, and we had some fantastic mentors and some people on the project, including yourself, Ahmadullah, kind of guiding us through uh, what to do in, in a group, thinking about what a project might be. And I always wanted to do something quite political because I am very interested in politics and uh, interested in history and, and how history and politics affects identity and kind of how that pans out now in terms of culture and working as a community organiser in this borough in Tower Hamlets with 24 institutions um, and seeing a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis in this borough, particularly with the stereotypes of the East End or particularly Bangladeshi people from Silet and what they've been able to achieve. I was really keen to do something to get that connection with Silet particularly because I'm Sileti, my parents are Sileti, we're very proud to be so. And I found that sometimes our young generation are not aware of some of the great heritage that we have in our culture. Uh, we see particular things um, as Sileti, it's like often kind of considering them to be not cool or you know, not great, but actually um, doing the research gave me an opportunity to explore some of those things. And so uh, eventually, thinking of lots of different topics uh, around the East India Company, I whittled it down to tea. And the reason I chose tea was because uh, sa, having a cup of tea, is something that is very common in the Bengali culture. Uh, as soon as anyone comes to your house, the first thing you do is run and uh, make them a cup of tea. Uh, and often your, uh, the, your, your kind of cooking skills or your, your uh, hosting skills are judged on the cup of tea uh, that you have. So I knew it was something that combined uh, um, a passion in Silet. And because uh, we're from Moli Bazaar originally, my parents are kind of... Uh, my mum's areas, particularly there. Uh, I was used to going to Bangladesh and seeing these wonderfully big green tea estates around there and around the Sri Mongol area. And I never, kind of knowing the history of why, uh, loads of places in Bangladesh had these big tea estates uh, around Silet and kind of heard about railway tracks and but kind of all very vague in my experience. But also thinking about a topic that would unite both uh, the Bangladeshi element and the Silet element, but also the British element because uh, tea is something very famous in England. Uh, Queen um, you know, loves her English tea and, and in the north a cup of tea makes it all better. So it was sort of a, something fun that uh, everyone had in common that I could research to see, okay well what were these uh, tea estates doing in Selet and why if uh, we have this mass amount of, amount of wealth and this estates and resources, is the country still poor? And that interested me because I think politically, um, thinking about colonialism and the past and actually the history of India and partition, uh, that would you know, be a quite exciting project to explore. Well, where does this love for tea come from and what other political ramifications? I had a fantastic mentor called Roy Moxham, who is an absolute expert on tea. So the bulk of my research uh, was, came from reading his book, Tea, Exploitation, Addiction, uh, an empire and it's a fantastic history of tea from where it was first discovered to the various forms to its journey through India particularly um, and then over to kind of Africa now um, transporting the history of tea, the economics, 
the social implications of politics and that was a really good kind of formal grounding it was a book about this thick in tea so I, I soon kind of became fascinated with you know some of the history of tea and finding out that it was one of uh, England Britain's most powerful commodities and at, at one time it was uh, the empire was built on the back of the tea trade and the East India commodity trading was really mm -hmm. interesting so that sort of started it and Roy helped me um, really focus my research on um, particular areas because what I was trying to do was trace and it was a bit of a tough task trace how tea mm -hmm. had the journey of tea from when it was first discovered all the way to how it reached London, England, and what it's doing in home. So it's from Sillet's Hills to Stepney's Homes, really, and, and that journey of tea. And that was quite um, a long-winded process, but kind of focusing on fine. Um, let's think about Sillet and the connection with Sillet. And I was really pleased to discover, actually, the, that the first ever discovery of Indian tea, or Assam tea, uh, was in Assam and uh, later they're saying, you know, Malni Chera in Silat district in 1857. And this is a commodity that's drunk the world over mm -hmm. and it was discovered uh, in our back garden, uh, effectively, we're in, in our parents' back garden. Um, and not enough people even know about that um, and that kind of journey. So I wanted to do a little bit of research and Roy helped me uh, go through the process and then we went over to when we were looking at the records, because this was a big discovery, they'd mm -hmm. made this tea in kind of East India Company at the time, thinking how can we, off the back of this, you know, commodify um, this product and make a lot of money, essentially. Uh, and that was a really interesting process. So going to the British Library and looking at records of the discovery of tea and kind of first-hand primary sources was a real uh, discovery in the history, I'd say. And it made me really angry. At different points in the project, I think, uh, and that was good. It was a healthy anger. It was a kind of a, um, a connection with your roots to think about how, in a globalized world, um, years into 200 years on from, you know, some of these discoveries, some of the same patterns of history are, are being uh, uh, repeated. So that made me a little bit angry, and, and particularly the fact that uh, we, as Bangladeshi facilities, don't know about the rich heritage of this commodity that's drunk world over and it's, it's from our own kind of area. Well, it's really great for me because I walk around this community and kind of seeing and to know that we've got, well, so we're in the heart of Whitechapel now, this Canal Street. To my left, you've got the City of London and then to my right, obviously, you've got kind of all back there, Canary Wharf and the docks in East London. And to think, just off the back of this road is Commercial Road and following the artery route from where tea was first exported or and imported in this country in the docks in the East End. So you've got Canary Wharf Museum of Docklands around there onto boats and then transported along the artil artillery route past sort of Limehouse, East India Dock Road, uh, onto Commercial Road. And the whole reason Commercial Road is called Commercial Road was because of all the commercial um, goods that were taken from the seaports into the area and traded and kind of lots of different commodities coming in um, and then having a store they used to store tea in the couple of street warehouses um, around and then basically commercial road leading into the city of london and the fact that the roads had to be widened to allow for more commerce to come through um, and then you had the one of some of the famous sites obviously the east india company headquarters in leadenhall street uh, now the site of uh, Lloyd's TSB, uh, which is a uh, you know, massive corporation. And actually, the history of Lloyd's was founded in a coffee house that was selling tea because Lloyd's were underwriters. And back in those days, in the uh, 1900s, 1800s, uh, people would gather in tea houses or coffee houses, coffee houses, uh, to talk about politics and the news. So all of this history entrenched in in the city of London, really interesting. If you're, if you're a foreigner, or if you ever think of what is one of the most luxurious stores in London, you think of Harrods. And isn't it fascinating that Harrods started his journey out um, in East London, um, and he was a tea merchant, uh, and used to sell kind of uh, tea in East London until he uh, bought a store away from East London in the Harrods site. 
and starting from selling tea, started sell, selling other things. And now it's the mm-hmm. world famous Harrods store that is visited by celebrities the world over. And it started in this humble area of the East End. And also Tesco's, uh, which is a massive multinational conglomerate corporate, also started its journey out uh, locally um, in, in this community here. And it kind of tells you the exact street uh, in the book. Uh, and then Tesco's as it grew. And Tesco's actually the name... Um, what legend has it is from T. E. Stockwell. Um, so T. E. Stockwell was obviously um, the Tesco, um, the Tesco tea supplier. Uh, so kind of the owner took his name Cohen um, from the T. E. Stockwell and his surname Cohen to, to come up with Tesco. So it's quite an interesting fact. And to know that one of the biggest stores was in East London, and um, that kind of came out of tea and him selling tea first and getting enough money off tea to, to buy other products was really interesting. But I think particularly in just a kind of understanding a shared history and a shared identity through something that everyone loves um, through a drink and through a commodity is important but also uh, it's especially positive for people of Bangladeshi descent or origin or anyone interested in the region because this gives you a real sense of connection with your community and your country and your background and how that has, you know, been married into British society and community for over 400 years. And so it's a, a real sense of belonging and the fact that when somebody tells you to go home, um, if you think about it, you're, you know, you are home. This is, if you live here, you live in this community, you're from here, you're born and brought up here. Just as the East India Company settled in, in our shores 400 years ago, all, the, all those years ago when we're here, kind of, that's, that's what globalisation is about, particularly for young Bangladeshis from Silet to be really proud of their identity and actually the fact to think that's an amazing fact the British Empire was built on the back of the tea trade Mm -hmm. and the tea trade you know you're talking about yes the East India Company did take um, plantings from China and plant them in India but also there was an indigenous indigenous form of tea a natural form of tea discovered in Assam so we did have our own tea there Um, and you know they discovered it and um, kind of cashed in on that discovery and so that kind of led to a couple of questionings of politically thinking are we would we have been better off if you know they didn't come and do that and you know but what's done is done what we need to now think about is how um, in this context people aren't exploited and, and we make the most of what we have in terms of natural resource in Bangladesh and in Selet and um, become a people that are proud of our heritage and, and are proud of our surroundings and what we've achieved.